Hello everyone, good Shabbos. Yeah, in this week's Parsha, we begin the Eser Makos. We have the first seven of the ten Makos that we read about on Pesach that we spend so much time discussing. Uh, the Makos follow a theme, and this is a theme and a question that I'm sure everyone's asked before. There are so many answers that are given, uh, so much Torah that's written on this. But there's a question. Uh, the Makos follow, uh, for the most part, a theme that Moshe Rabbeinu asks Paro Please let us leave Egypt. Power refuses. Hashem brings some sort of terror down on Mitzrayim. Uh, Paro begs Moshe, please make it stop. I'm ready to let you go. And as soon as the Maka stops, uh, Paro changes his mind. Now, with some of the Makos, it says explicitly in the Pasuk that Hashem hardened Paro's heart. Uh, so many of the Rishonim ask a question. It's an obvious question. It's such an important question that fundamental to everything we know about humanity about Judaism is that life is given meaning by the fact that we have free will. We have the ability to choose between good and evil. When we do evil, we're punished. When we do good, we're given rewards, sometimes in this world, sometimes in the next world. Most of it is in the next world, hopefully. So how is it possible that Hashem took that away from Paro and then punished them? Punish Paro, punish the Mitzrim for something that he forced them to do. It doesn't make any sense. So many of them before Shem asked this question, I'm going to give one parish from the Abarbanel that I think gives us tremendous insight into our own life. The Abarbanel says that why was it that Hashem hardened Paro's heart? It's not that Hashem was taking away Paro's free will. Hashem was handing Paro his free will. How does that make any sense? What does that mean Hashem was giving Paro his free will? When Hashem's presence was so obvious in front of Paro, when the water turned into blood and frogs started coming out of the river and every one, one after the other after the other with Kinim and Dever and Arov, it was so obvious to Paro that Hashem was running the world. It was so obvious to Paro what the right thing was to do. So what did Hashem do? He removed himself from the equation. He made Paro forget what it was like to live through the Makos. He wanted Paro to make a decision based on his own free will, not based on God's presence being so right in front of them. To, to do anything good, if it's too obvious, it loses its meaning. So often, let's say the number one question as a Jew we're supposed to ask ourselves every morning when we wake up, through every significant moment of our life, is, what am I doing here? What does Hashem want from me? Now, it's a hard question to figure out, but ultimately... We beg and we plead, if only Hashem would tell me what to do. But that's not the answer. The answer isn't for Hashem to tell us what to do because that would leave our lives without meaning. What do we want, what's ideal, is for us to work through that, to figure it out, for us to make good decisions based on their own good merit, based on our own free will. Have a good Shabbos, and I hope to see everyone soon.